Kucuk. Presiden, please be seated. The court is now back in session, and the floor is handed over. Is handed over to Judge Lawrence to resume the questioning. You may now proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Witness, um, we were still questioning just before the break about certain soldiers such as Ing Samring Wun Sheng Po Sevan. And I'd like to know what was your role? What was your participation in the front that was created at that time? I left Cambodia and went to Long Kang, the police station. But uh, let me backtrack a little bit. I would, I would like to start from the beginning. First, I was on an airplane, and the airplane landed in Ho Chi Minh, said the witness. Then I was brought to Long Kang police station. I was there for two weeks. Then I was further, I further went to Long Yao, the military barrack. After which, I went to, I left Long Yao and came back to Cambodia. When you returned to Cambodia, you fought against the forces of democratic Cambodia? In what capacity did you return to Cambodia? Were you a soldier, a civilian? What was your role? I returned to Cambodia and I became the deputy chief of police in zone seven of, of for the Vietnam for Vietnam and I was in charge of Kutche, Swai Rieng and Kampong Cham. I was tasked with uh, receiving uh, soldiers who had been arrested uh, and placed detained at Wat Chi. Very well. In order to be very clear, on what date did you return to Cambodia? Was it before the 7th of January 1979 or after the 7th of January 1979? Your Honor, I returned to Cambodia immediately after the liberation, I mean after in 1979 to uh, collect and receive prisoner of war who were detained, who were placed at Kampong Tom. I uh, had to educate them about the policy of the front. And were those prisoners prisoners of the East Zone Army or they were from other zones? Who were those prisoners? Which military unit did they belong to? They were sent to my headquarter. They were from uh, different units. They were sent from Siem Reap and Kampong Tom. In fact, they were part of uh, platoon and companies. 
they had been sent to my location for education. Et en quoi consistait And in concrete terms, what does the education consist of? What was the objective of such education? The purpose of the education was to instruct uh, those people to do good deeds and to understand about the eff effects of uh, killings. And the main purpose of the education was uh, for them to understand the six or eight points of the policy of the front. Et est-ce qu'il y avait au-dessus de vous? And above you, was there someone who supervised the manner in which the education was dispensed, or you were free to decide the nature of such education? Did you receive any instructions from anyone? And if so, who was the person who gave you such instructions? Akun. It was dependent on me, and the chief was a Vietnamese person, and I was the deputy chief. The education uh, was in accordance with the policy of the front. Et est-ce qu'on peut dire qu'elle était aussi en accord? And can we say that? That person was also in agreement with the policies desired by Vietnam. Vietnam handed over the task to Khmer to be in charge of education, particularly in the to educate about the policy. At the time, there was no clear structure, and we were under the supervision of uh, Vietnam, and I was the only one who became the deputy chief. I had to uh, collect uh, forces from uh, platoon and companies to state be stationed in that location. Est-ce que vous pouvez nous donner une idée de Can you give us an idea of the number of persons who were subjected to such education or re-education? How many soldiers were involved in such education? We Collected, we could collect uh, 400 uh, soldiers from platoons and companies. They were not uh, part of soldiers, in fact. They were uh, civilian. We collected them, we gathered them from uh, different parts of the provinces. C'était des cadres? Were they cadres or? Ordinary base people. They were civilian cadres from uh, platoons and companies. They were not base or ordinary people. They were uh, civilian cadres of the Khmer Rouge. Est-ce que par la suite euh, vos relations and did your relations with your superiors worsen subsequently? Did they become degraded subsequently? Akun. <coughs> Regarding 
the relationship between I and my supervisor? You mean uh, my Vietnamese supervisor or my Khmer supervisor? Avec vos supérieurs en général, est-ce que par la I mean your superiors in general. Were you arrested subsequently? And if so, why? I was at the camp educating uh, cadres from platoons and companies. Later on, there was a dispute between Vietnamese and I. We were not in agreement uh, in relation to the policy. I was in the security section and I was the first one uh, working in the security section together with uh, Sun Song and some other individual. I was the one who organized uh, T3 or T3. Later on, there was uh, news that I had been detained. In 1978, uh, people from Svai Liang uh, had been transferred to I asked at the time the permission from some need to help those people. I did not arrive at Posat yet. I was with five soldiers at the time, and I did not arrive at that location yet to uh, assist those people who had been transferred to that location. Later on, because of this incident, I was uh, put in prison for eight months. I was uh, imprisoned in 1980. I am sorry. There may be translation problems because your answer was not very clear. Can you tell us what you went to do? Precisely in Persat, and when did you go to Persat? What was the purpose of your trip to Persat? I went to Persat in 1979, the sole purpose of which was to search for my family members who had been evacuated by Pol Pot. They had, my family members had been evacuated to Liege. I was under accusation that I uh, was attempting to flee by the foreigners, said the witness. I was questioned, I was repeatedly questioned why I went to Pol Sat. And I told them that I wanted to go and search for my family members. This was the cause. This was the cause of the dispute. And then I was imprisoned in 1980 for eight months. Donc, est-ce que je dois comprendre que si vous should I understand therefore that you were imprisoned because? the authorities thought you wanted to flee out of Cambodia and they had lost uh, confidence in you. When I say they, I do not know whether they were Vietnamese or other persons. Can you be more clear on that subject? Let me clarify. Vietnam no longer trusted me. There were very few Khmer people working at the time. I was accused that I wanted to flee to Thailand. I, at the time, did not know Thailand. I did not know about the uh, relationship, the situation at the border, rather, 
and I was under accusation. I was questioned. Submission were not uh, made at the time. Arguments or evidence were not uh, presented to me. I was under accusation. I did not know how to respond, and then I was imprisoned, as I said. Et cette prison était une prison qui and was that a prison administered by Cambodians, by Vietnamese? Were you judged or tried? And what happened thereafter? Your Honor, when I was arrested, I was accused that I wanted to flee to Thailand. I was put in prison in 1979. The s conditions in the prison were so w bad. I did not rise to eat. I was the red, the red maize or corn was cooked for me to eat. Sometimes I had souls to eat, but some other occasion I did not have. Uh, it, the prison was under the supervision of Vietnam, maize was cooked for prisoners to eat. I was so disappointed. I uh, could get out of uh, one regime, and I fell into the other hands. Uh, I mean, I was I fell into the other regime. Just one dernière question. Just one. Last question on the subject. If I understood you correctly, you were in prison for eight months and you were subsequently released and there was no trial. Did I properly understand your testimony? But that is correct, Your Honor. Bien. Je voudrais passer une dernière série de questions. Very well. I would like to move into the last line of questioning. Can you tell us? When you were in the East Zone during the Democratic Cambodia regime, did you witness any visits by leaders from the center who went to the East Zone? For instance, did you see the accused here present visit the East Zone? Akon. I never saw them. I did not recognize or know them. En tant que cadre, as a cadre in the East Zone, did you receive instructions or did you witness the implementation of policies that specifically concerned former soldiers of the Lon Nol regime. There was no policy disseminated to me. I was in I was working in the medical sector. The medical sector was in charge of uh, treating people. Et est-ce que vous avez été le témoin de and did you witness the disappearance of persons who were called up for education sessions? Is that something that happened? I know that people disappeared, but I do not know where they went to. I do not, I do not know where they went. I know that uh, they were called for education. I do not know their policies at the time. Quand vous étiez dans la zone est, 
when you are in the east zone do you know whether among the people of the population of the east zone there were Vietnamese living there and do you know whether there were any particular policies implemented regarding that particular category of people living in Cambodia? In DK, there were no Vietnamese people. Il n'y avait pas ou il n'y avait plus. There wasn't or there was no longer. You said there were no Vietnamese. Now, why weren't there any Vietnamese? Had they left? What had happened to them? There were no Vietnamese people in the DK. There were only Khmer people. I do not know if uh, they had left, but I, at the time, did not see any single Vietnamese. Very well. Last question. It has to do with the Cham population. Did you receive instructions or did you witness the implementation of a particular policy vis-a-vis -vis the Cham people? I did not receive any policy vis-a-vis -vis Cham population. I was working in the medical sector. The policies of the DK were not made, made known to the medical sector. I do not know about the policies. Very well, Mr. Witness. Thank you for all your answers. I have no further questions for you. President, thank you, Judge. The floor is now given to the co-prosecutors to put the questions to the witness. You may not proceed. Co-prosecutor. Good morning, everyone in and around the courtroom, and good morning, Mr. Witness. My name is Seng Ling. I'm a National Deputy Co-Prosecutor, and I have some supplementary questions uh, to those questions that you have been asked by the bench. Yesterday, you s spoke about one of uh, Sopham's messengers who fled and uh, survived. Since uh, you frequently uh, had contact with uh, Sao Pen, can you tell the chamber how many uh, close bodyguards he had? Answer. Sao Pen had five bodyguards. Question, and what are their names? And so I can already call uh, two, Chuong and Um, Chuong and Um, Chuong rather, and I forget uh, the other three names. Question: Do you know Nong Nim and Jane? Uh, the names uh, do not sound familiar. That is no name and chain. Question that is all right. So you know uh, Ang. How well do you know this uh, person? Answer. Uh, 
two and um, they were my uh, nephews, but they died. Question. Yesterday at around 3.09, you spoke about Sao Pem, and you told him that uh, Pol Pot was a traitor, but uh, Sao Pem did not uh, believe you. And he said it was probably uh, Son Sen who uh, conducted the coup d'etat against the Pol Pot. In order to clarify this matter, I'd like to uh, read the two interviews. One is in a lesson to Nong Sim, who worked as a bodyguard for uh, Sao Pem, and he gave an interview to DC Cam on 9 July 2015. And I'd like to read it at uh, page 62. Question. He was questioned by Danny. Uh, from your recollection, uh, what did he say? And uh, Nong Im uh, replies, I did not uh, do any uh, wrong. Sorry, can we have a reference or did I miss it? Uh, the document is an uh, interview by uh, DC Cam dated it was between Nong Sim and DC Cam staff uh, dated 9 September 2015 says the uh, deputy co-prosecutor this document does not carry any E3 number However, it was uh, sent by a chamber to uh, parties and notified the parties that this document will be used during the proceedings. Uh, if, if I may um, uh, correct my, my colleague, um, it, ha it has an E3 number. It's E3 slash uh, 10717. And it also has ERN numbers. It was admitted last week. My uh, apology, I printed this document and it does not contain uh, the uh, document number. President, uh, you should then uh, move on to other question. And uh, you can refer to this uh, document later. Thank you, Mr. President. Now I move to uh, another uh, topic, and I return to this topic later on if I have time left. Another document is in relation to the uh, war period in late 77. When you were sent to the battlefront in uh, 77, can you tell the chamber as to uh, the date that you were sent there? And upon your arrival, were you uh, instructed to directly engage in uh, the uh, battlefront? Answer. I have uh, spoken at length on this point. I cannot recall the, the date that I was sent to the battlefield. It happened a long time ago, and I was sent there as a medic. And that happened in late 77. Question. Was there uh, an attack uh, with the uh, Vietnamese side uh, upon your arrival, that is in Division 4? Or did you have uh, time to prepare uh, for the attack? And if so, how long did it take for uh, such a preparation? Uh, 
answer. I cannot recall how many uh, uh, hours uh, we uh, were there before the attack. I was there. We arrived there at night time. Question. Based on your uh, interview, that is in document E3 slash 10668, uh, uh, question answer 9, you were asked a question about the preparatory uh, time, that how long it took before the uh, initial attack on Vietnam is in 77, and you said that you made preparation for around one month before you launched the attack. What is your response to that? Answer. Regarding this uh, statement, I refer to a meeting held within uh, the regiment. They raised this matter about one month earlier so that uh, we could uh, be sure about the situation. And the meeting was organized uh, by Regiment 156. Question. When you were sent uh, in this Regiment 156, uh, who actually ordered you to go there and how many uh, staff were there in your uh, medical unit? Answer. I was sent to the uh, battlefront as a medic and it was the commander of Regiment 156 who uh, gave the instruction. There were six of us in the medical unit. We were at the uh, preparatory uh, battlefield that is uh, a bit at the rear and not at the front. Question. During the course of your preparation, did you have to prepare your medical uh, equipment, uh, medicines, that would be sufficient enough for the uh, period of war? And uh, for the medical unit, we had to prepare all the utilities or materials that we had to use as the uh, battlefront. And it was uh, sufficient. Question. And before the assault started, was there any leader from the center or from uh, the zone to visit uh, the front uh, battlefield line? And so before the assault uh, at our speedhead, there was no such uh, visit by anyone from the center. We were under the supervision of the commander of 156. Question. Can you tell the chamber why your regiment 156 was uh, sent to attack uh, Vietnamese Barrack 27? Do you know the motive behind it? Answer. Uh, the regiment is 156. And uh, our spearhead was uh, directly opposite Barrack 27. Division 4 was uh, divided into three uh, regiments 154, 155, stationed at Arm, Takop, and Wahwe 156 was stationed at uh, Road 27. So uh, the barrack was uh, within our spearhead. Question. And before uh, the assault started on Barrack 27, did uh, was there any study to compare the forces, the 
weapons and means uh, on the Vietnamese side to uh, your side, and whether Division 4 could defeat the Vietnamese side. And uh, regarding uh, our spearhead, that is for Regiment 156, before we engage, we uh, send our uh, Reconnaissance a team to uh, to do the survey, and that happened in every battlefield. Question. So for the attacks on other targets, as you described, including Barrack Twenty Seven, how many forces did your regiment one five six use, and were you supported by uh, other uh, heavy weaponry? And uh, we had over 1,000 forces in Regiment 156. Of course, we did not uh, deploy all the forces. We only used a portion of the forces, and that is for the uh, replacement of purposes. We had uh, uh, DK uh, artillery, for example. Question and uh, regarding the uh, assault on Barrack Twenty Seven, as you stated yesterday, you uh, could penetrate uh, the uh, the enemy line. However, due to the intervention by uh, tanks and aerial support, you could not uh, you uh, could not continue your penetration, and that you had to retreat. In your capacity as a medic, do you have the figure of the uh, wounded and the dead? And was there any uh, of the senior uh, commander uh, in your regiment uh, got wounded? And uh, it happened uh, a long time ago, and I cannot tell you the uh, number. There, is a, there was a summary daily uh, report, and one of the uh, commanders uh, named Chun was wounded. He was uh, uh, hit in his chest. Vietnamese side was supported by uh, tanks and uh, uh, planes. Question. Was uh, Chun the commander of uh, Regiment 156? Or uh, what was his uh, uh, function? Answer Chun was uh, the military uh, commander of uh, Regiment 156. Question And after Chun was wounded, how serious was uh, his wound and was he sent uh, somewhere else for treatment? Answer, Chun, the deputy commander, uh, was wounded and he was sent for treatment at uh, a P through hospital which belongs to the zone. Question, and after he uh, was wounded, who replaced him? Uh, that is for the attack on Barrack 27. Answer. In each uh, regiment, uh, there were four uh, people in the uh, leadership. So when one was uh, not uh, available, the other three uh, would take charge. Question. You also stated that because you could not uh, attack Barak. 27, you had to uh, retreat to the border. How was the situation within your forces at the border? Were you in a position only to uh, contain the uh, Vietnamese uh, troops, or did you also 
have planned at the time to continue your penetration. Answer. For forces in 156, after we uh, retreated, our uh, measure was to contain them, not to allow them to uh, make any further advancement. Question. Can you tell the chamber your uh, strategy uh, that was used uh, to uh, contain the uh, Vietnamese advancement into Cambodian territory? Answer. Re regarding the strategies, we all learned the same uh, strategies. But uh, the tactics, uh, the tactics uh, depended on each uh, military uh, commander, and uh, they were all different. So, each commander had to engage in his own uh, tactics, despite all the common strategies they learned from their uh, training. They deploy different tactics uh, at the at the battle. That is to minimize. Uh, uh, the number of casualty and to uh, to win the war. Question. So as for uh, your uh, uh, group, that is Regiment One Five Six, did you resort to uh, laying mines and a spy traps in order to uh, disrupt the advancement by the Vietnamese troops? Answer. My unit uh, did not uh, use uh, any mines or spike traps. Question. So you uh, uh, contained them for a period of time at the border area? And you also stated that uh, Vietnamese uh, broke through a uh, line to, uh, at uh, where Regiment 155 uh, was based. Can you tell the chamber at that time what happens to your Regiment 156? Answer. Yesterday I made mentions about this uh, already. We were busy at the battlefront. Then a Vietnamese uh, troops who uh, broke through uh, 155 at uh, Bota Kok. They came through uh, Road uh, 7 and then attacked us uh, from uh, behind. We were not aware that uh, they broke through at uh, Bota Kok, but we uh, learned that we were shelled uh, by tanks from behind. Then we, re we realized uh, that uh, they, they made it. So we had to retreat ourselves to the west, that is to Kuba Damre and Tulu Songkai in order to, uh, to counter uh, their attack. Question. Regarding the attack on Vietnamese uh, troops in December 77, were all East uh, Zone soldiers sent to the uh, border, or were uh, portions of uh, the uh, forces uh, remain inside the country in order to uh, contain the Vietnamese uh, troops in case that they uh, broke through? And uh, during the uh, uh, starting of the campaign, all forces were sent, uh, and there was no one that left behind. Question. You also uh, stated that the uh, Vietnamese uh, troops uh, penetrated uh, to uh, Kana village about 20 kilometers from the border, that is in uh, Tabong Khmum, district of Kampong Cham province. When Vietnamese troops uh, made uh, that advancement, were there any Khmer Rouge forces who tried to uh, contain uh, them there? And if so, what were? Uh, those forces. And uh, when Vietnamese uh, penetrated through 
uh, there were no horses to contend them along uh, road 7. That is why uh, 156 and 154 has to retreat and then to, uh, to contend them, to contend their advancement. Because by that time they broke through uh, the other uh, section and we, we could not make it in time. So we had to retreat in order to uh, stop their advancement. Question regarding the advancement by the Vietnamese uh, troops. Do you recall how many uh, soldiers in those uh, troops comparing to uh, the East Zone forces? And what kinds of weapons and uh, support uh, uh, artillery that were used at the time? And uh, when uh, Vietnam made uh, its uh, penetration, uh, it used heavy artillery. They were more than, for example, 130 millimeter, 105 millimeter artillery, as well as uh, tanks. They used their uh, main regular forces to uh, make that, uh, that push. Question. Regarding uh, your regiment 156 and 155, who had to retreat to uh, the bug in order to uh, counter the advancements by the Vietnamese troops, uh, did you succeed? Answer. At that time, there were not only 156, there were uh, sector uh, forces who uh, came to uh, counter Vietnamese uh, advancement. So for that reason, Vietnamese uh, troops could not advance further and they had to retreat. Question, based on your uh, observation at the time, if Vietnamese troops uh, intended to advance further, could the uh, DK forces uh, stop them or contain them? Answer. If uh, Vietnamese troops uh, were to advance further, then the, there would be uh, DK forces who uh, would prevent them further. There were uh, standby forces, and uh, they, they comprise of uh, two divisions uh, for that uh, purpose. So once the penetration was made, Forces from the two divisions uh, uh, walked uh, through the uh, jungle at night time in order to uh, to stop them from any further advancement. And uh, here I refer to uh, divisions, including uh, Division uh, 2. And uh, since Vietnamese troops uh, were aware of the situation, they had to retreat. Question, based on uh, your uh, claim, that uh, DK forces had uh, stronger forces and that could uh, defeat the areas that they uh, occupied, or whether the Vietnamese troops quietly withdrew uh, from the area. Answer. Divisions uh, one and two actually uh, made their move since uh, soldiers had to walk through the night. Vietnamese uh, troops were aware of the situation. For that reason, they uh, themselves uh, withdrew. Question. After the uh, withdrawal of the Vietnamese uh, troops, did your Division 4 uh, try to recruit and uh, recount the, uh, the damage? Answer. Do you ask me about the division? I am not aware of the division. Of course, uh, there has to be a report from for each unit, including uh, the damage, loss of life, and the loss of uh, equipment. Question. 
after the withdrawal of the Vietnamese troops did Sao Pham go to inspect the forces at the battlefront? Answer. It was uh, typical that the zone uh, leader did not go to the battlefront himself. He only issued uh, uh, instructions or orders to the uh, division commanders, and the division commanders themselves did not go to the battlefield. They issued further orders to the uh, commanders of regiments. Question, Mr. President, in the interest of time, I'd like to uh, to put uh, more uh, questions regarding the documents that I do not have the uh, ear and, and the document number for later this afternoon. President, yes, you, you can do that. Uh, you have the ear and number. Council Koppe has mentioned it to you, if this is the same document. Uh, uh, Deputy Co-Presidente, Madam Judge, I do have the uh, document. However, I'd like to compare the year na number and the uh, excerpts that I would like to extract. I'd like to make sure that uh, it is uh, uh, correct. President, uh, thank you. It is now convenient time for a uh, lunch break. The chairman will take a break now and resume at 1.30 this afternoon to continue our proceedings. Court officer, please assist the witness at the betting room reserved for witnesses during the lunch break and invite him as well as his uh, duty counsel back into the courtroom at 1.30 this afternoon. Security personnel, you are instructed to take you some pawn to the waiting room downstairs and have him returned to attend the proceedings this afternoon before 1.30. The court stands in recess. <laughs>